I, I, I don't want to read your books. I couldn't anyhow. I'm flat out here in the show. <laughs> so, so if all this goes ahead as proposed in these two bills, which is what we're supposed to be about, do you, would you say that uh, the future of Qantas is at risk? I, I absolutely believe it, Senator. Um, as I said in my open remarks, for example, the the, the, the Qantas Sale Act amendments that would uh, would apply to Jetstar if they were extended. Uh, would leave us with this dilemma of either um, having Jetstar competing against its competitors under restrictions that its competitors do not have, that I think would, would result in the failure of Jetstar in the long run, or that we would have to release Jetstar from uh, the, 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 the coverage of the Qantas Sale Act by selling it. Now, the, the sale of Jetstar is not in the interest of Qantas long term. The sale of the reason why uh, Qantas is one of the only investment grade airlines in the world, the reason why Qantas has made profits through the global financial crisis is because it has a portfolio of premium airlines, of low cost airlines, of a frequent flyer and a freight business. And if you start demantling that and start having to hive off components of that, that will result in the Qantas group um, having immense exposure uh, to its international business more than it does today. And I think that would put Qantas in danger of failure. And we were very worried about the implications of this. I mean, the facts, the facts are very clear. I think just look at the... You know, it wasn't too long ago when one in every two Australians travelling out of Australia used to travel on Qantas. Um, and customers today, there's 82 percent or 82 out of every hundred, are picking someone else other than Qantas to fly on when they fly out of Australia. That's a pretty compelling stat in terms of the way customers are voting with their wallets in terms of going for the cheapest fares. So although we talk about... That's why I bought the $30 shoes instead of the 10 <laughs> Exactly. So you've got these two policies which are seen uh, like they're incongruous, they just don't fit together. You've got on one side open skies, you've got trying to build a tourism industry and open the Australian aviation market to the world, which has resulted in Qantas market share declining to 18%. And on the other side, you're saying let's burden Qantas with all these additional costs in a highly competitive market, payroll tax, different depreciation rates. And now on top of that, we're saying you're going to put extra costs in the labour environment where there's already huge burdens in the labour costs, not just in terms of work practices, but also the exchange rate. And all of those just make Qantas more and more uncompetitive, and it's going to result in a more rapid decline of the market share out of Australia. I mean, if you look around Australia, I mean, a mate of mine, Roger Fletcher in Dubbo, he just shut his war business, you know, can't compete. Um, I mean, when the US took over from Great Britain, sorry to give you a lesson in history, Mr Joyce, but a hundred years ago, as oh, the I'm being very patient, Senator. As the industrial uh, really thank, thank you very much for that. Today, yeah, because we've got to get the, we've got to get the, what we're up against. That's a big statement by made it very clear. It's so this is, this is, this is putting Qantas at peril. They had a two to one labour advantage over Great Britain. China, in about a midsection of its labour cost, has about a 25 to one mm -hmm. labour advantage against the US. The US is technically insolvent. I mean, we are trying to say that we're going to have a fortress mentality for, for airlines, but not for everything else. We're going to meet the market with wool, wool processing, you know, sheep and cattle on the export market. Um, do you think? The Parliament gets it. Do you, do you really think? I mean, I don't know what the authors of this this it, want out of it, but do you think they understand the implications of these bills? I, I hope so, Senator. I mean, that's why, as I said, we're now back to the fourth Senate committee hearing that we've had in a year. Uh, we've answered 200 questions uh, that we've been supplied on this, 20 questions on notice. Um, this will be six hours in total just on this. I think if we haven't made it clear what the implications of this bill are, then, then we've failed. And I think you're, you're absolutely right. I can't use, in my opening statement, and what we said just here, I can't use any stronger language to what I think it means for the Qantas group. This is fundamentally important for the Qantas group. We do not want to have uh, restrictions on us that makes us less competitive. We need to be flexible and to adapt. And I don't want to see, I'm very passionate about this brand. I think it's an amazing success story here in Australia. Now this little airline that started in outback Queensland, that's now the 10th largest airline in the world, the only investment grade airline in the world, one of the few profitable airlines in the world, has a group fleet of nearly 300 aircraft, flies to every continent in the world. It's an unbelievable success story. We should be all proud of it. We should be all talking it up. 
and we should be all saying, how can we ensure it's around for the next 90 years? This act then makes sure that it isn't around for the next 90 years if the changes are made. We need to make sure Qantas is flexible and adaptable, as it has been in its entire history. Once we were just a regional freight business, then we were a domestic business, then we were only an international business, now we're a global business. We need Qantas to change and adapt like it has in 90 years. This act tries to pull us back a decade or more and restricts us in our ability to change to the market environment. So, I mean, I've said many times on this committee that my great worry about the airlines, and Qantas is included in it, and there's a whole lot of other airlines that have gone belly up, is that if the travelling public expect to fly from Sydney to Port Douglas for 50 bucks, and you can go, I see, over the Christmas break for $350 to Hawaii, um, if we are to maintain the financial viability of an airline and at the same time maintain the safety record and maintenance of an airline, one or the other, in my view, will fail. If we continue along the logic that these bills take us, um, the, so, so, I mean, I don't, I don't get it because, I mean, after the war, if you bought it something Japanese, World War II, it was, oh God, it's cheap and nasty and doesn't work. Then Japan became a leader in car manufacture and their costs caught up with them and they were gone. Then we went to Korea and, oh God, Korean stuff, it's rubbish. They came good. And now we've gone to Chinese cars because the cost of labour is going up and China is about to use the labour costs where 80% of the population in Bangladesh earn a dollar a day. Um, so with all that in mind, um, it, it would be fair to say that the average Australian wants to ensure the safety yeah. of Qantas and the maintenance of Qantas, hence probably the idea that you should maintain your planes in Australia. But wouldn't it be fair to say, given technology, you know, and the lots of doctors come to Australia from overseas, especially from Egypt, the copy doctors, they're bloody good doctors. Yes. I mean, just because they're trained overseas doesn't mean to say they're no good. I Is there a, any sort of a risk in, if you've, to survive as an airline, you've got to get some of your maintenance done overseas? Is, isn't it fair to say that that maintenance is up to scratch? Um, absolutely, Senator. And I absolutely believe that you can get the efficiencies and make sure you're efficient and maintain the immensely uh, the, the, the immense safety record that Qantas has had. There isn't a compromise between the two. I think absolutely they can go hand in hand. And if you think of where uh, what we're talking about, I mean the A380s is a great example. Uh, we have 12 aircraft at the moment. We're never going to have. Um, uh, we're, we're not going to have 20 aircraft um, until the end of this decade. Uh, the size of that fleet is insufficient for us to do, to have the critical mass to do here in Australia. Now, if we were based somewhere else where it made logical sense for other airlines to do the maintenance here, then you may be able to construct a maintenance base to do the maintenance of those aircraft. So Qantas has the dilemma of building hangars for A380s that are going to be massively underutilized, the labor that's going to be utilized, or doing the maintenance in one of the providers around the world. And you know, the maintenance that we've gotten done on the A380 have been in companies like Lufthansa. But who would say that the Germans do not have the technical or engineering expertise to, 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 to repair or, or manage aircraft? And I think perceptions of safety are also changing. You know, you look at the record of the world aviation industry, and it's continuously, continuously improved. The amount of accidents and fatalities every year has dropped as new technology and new systems have come into place. And now, with Australians travelling overseas, they take that for granted because the world aviation industry is a lot safer. And people are not willing to pay a massive premium for Qantas because of its safety reputation because uh, people see the world airline industry as having dramatically improved. And what I say to, to the Australian public, if, if, if it is important for you that maintenance is done here in Australia, then you only have one choice. That, that is Qantas. Because all of the other airlines that, do, that fly into this country have the vast majority of the maintenance done overseas, and 82 out of, uh, out of 100 Australians fly on those airlines. 
I cannot say um, the maintenance that is done by these airlines in other countries is not substandard, as you say. I mean, they, they we're talking about people like Lufthansa, uh, people like Cathay Pacific, Singapore Airlines. Um, they, they have amazingly capable maintenance facilities uh, that are world-leading maintenance facilities, and we should recognize that. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm really worried about what this is really all about. Um, would it be fair to say that in the international market you're unable to compete um, and, and your competitors are and why is that? Is that, is that just a combination of all those things? I, I think Qantas can compete and we have, we have to change to be competitive in the international markets. Uh, we have a plan that we want to implement, our implement it, that we think will turn around our international business. And I've committed to the market that we believe in three years we can get the business back into profits, uh, to a break-even situation, and within five years to, to returning its cost of capital. But that is going to need significant change to the way we do the business. There are parts of a business uh, that we already internationally are making money on, there are parts to a business internationally where we're losing a lot of money. We're addressing them with a combination of actions that we announced last year. One component is to pull back on the significant loss-making routes. Another component is to work with alliance partners. And with American Airlines, we've just got antitrust immunity um, that is paying dividends. For example, our Dallas servers is profitable already and so performing the San Francisco servers and for a new servers, that's an amazing position to be in. Uh, we are uh, looking at antitrust community and alliance partners in other areas to do the same transformation we've seen on the North American route. And we are looking at what we do in Asia. And we need to do something different in Asia because Asia is the weakest market for Qantas. It's the lowest share of, of, of our market share. And it is the biggest growth market. And it's going to be the most profitable market in the world. So we are talking to a number of parties about what we do in Asia to make Qantas relevant to that market and how we can produce use an alternative for our business customers that make us. That plan we think can get us there and can make us competitive. But this act, if the changes to this act go through, it will be one step forward, two steps back. And that's the danger that this act so, will So this to. act um, will threaten your investments in Jetstar Asia, etc. Um, do, do you think, God help us, we don't do it. Um, you would actually lose those investments? No, well, I think that the last modifications uh, changes the implications, my understanding of what it means for the Asian investments, but it does have severe implications for Jetstar in Australia. And as I said, it either means that Jetstar will win it, or Jetstar would have to be sold. If you had to sell Jetstar in Australia, then Jetstar and the rest of Asia would obviously logically go with it. And that's, that, that would have implications for those investments. So, I mean, and obviously business. Mike Murdoch yeah. is on to this, but in terms of um, regional services, and you say this could put at risk regional oh. services, and, and I, uh, Mr Joyce, I hope we don't have too many Q400 incidents like the one we had the other day here in Canberra. Um, but how does <laughs> you, you, you can you can go there if you want to. Yeah. Um, how does this threaten some of the regional services in Australia? Well, well I think I, I might just I think I will mention the Q400 <laughs> instance so like, because you do it. Yeah, because this will come to us in due yeah. course, but it's probably not. Mr. You, Mr. Chairman, in the context of this hearing. No, it is, but we will deal with it. The, the Q400 issue that we've had, as we, we talked about, Senator, I think, at, the, at, at your last committee, um, engine failures are occurrence on engines all around the world. Um, Qantas has an amazingly successful operation of twin engines because the safety issue, as you're, as you're aware, comes with failure of twin engine, uh, twin engine aircraft. And our failure rate on twin engine aircraft is three in a million hours. So a million hours operate, you have three failures. The world average is seven in a million. Mm. The actual le legislative limit is 20 in a million. If you go past 20, you have to ground the aircraft. Mm. So Qantas has won awards for the number of different manufacturers for the length of time it's actually had engines on wing without failure. For example, on the Boeing 737-800s, we've had over a million errors 
of the aircraft.